always, 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 always validate what you're doing. Now, there's a lot of different ways you can go through validation. You could do an AP on a stick. When you do an AP on a stick, you actually put an AP up on a tripod. Now, you can do this before you design as a technique to measure RF attenuation in the walls, to measure how if the maps you were given match. You can do an AP on a stick after you design to validate the design. You're not validating the install. You're validating, does the design still meet my requirements? I like to do validations post-install. Now in the post-install validation range, there's two big categories, active and passive. You always have to have a passive. In fact, Ekehau makes it so you can't do an active without having a passive. Passive, the most important. Passive means I'm listening to everyone, neighbors, mine, my SSID, somebody else's. I want every, all the information I can gather together. Compared with an active, an active is when you have your client device associate to an AP, and you're either pinging or sending iProof data. Realize the active survey data you re re receive is going to be extremely flawed. Because think, every time you're near an AP and you walk away, the signal strength gets weaker and weaker and weaker. Your ping times get higher and higher as you walk away. And then all of a sudden, you're right here, and you're next to the next AP. As soon as you associate it to it, it's amazingly fast. And so you get with active surveys is this degradation as you walk away from one AP, a little break, and then really fast as you associate it to the next AP. If you did an active survey clockwise, looked at the data, you would see it skewed. There would be a tail going away from every access point in an active survey away. When you went toward an AP, you're not going to have any active data because you were on the previous AP. Now, there's nothing wrong with active data. It just doesn't tell you what you think it tells you. You think the active survey is going to say, you, hey, a user here will receive this. Totally false. You're walking some weird path that normal people don't do. You're collecting data from APs. You might skip three APs because you roamed over them. Just realize active survey data, suspect, and every time you roam, you'll get a drop. And so if you're plotting out ping times, you will get drops every time you roamed, that does not mean that this location is a bad Wi-Fi. You might have fantastic Wi-Fi there. It just happens to be where you did that little roam. Stop and go versus continuous. I love continuous. I hate stop and go. Stop and go is for losers. Stop and go is for people who don't mind throwing away their data. Because when you collect data with a continuous, every time you walk, click when I start, click when I stop, click when you turn. Very simple rules. It's all you have to need to know and you go everywhere. All the data in between every one of those clicks is being collected. You flip into a stop and go mode, you click, you wait, takes a longer time. You then, when you're done with the stop, the go part is you're walking, and you know what happens as you're walking? You're throwing all the data away. You're collecting data, the data is actually being collected right then, and you decided, since I can't walk in a straight line and I don't know how to click when I start, when I stop, when I turn, I'm going to willingly throw all that data away. All you have to do to see this is look at your data set and you will see that. Stop and goes, use continuous mode. Now in continuous mode, we have other choices. We can go autopilot. We can do GPS. We can just walk and click. You can use an iPhone, an iPad. There's all sorts of ways you can go around these.